Okay, um, in this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to graph linear equations given a table. Now, um, this is going to be very different from what we've done before, which was solving equations, which we could get an answer. In these types of problems, um, you're actually not going to get an answer. You're going to get a set of answers, and it's very different. Uh, very soon in this class, you're going to start seeing equations like this, y equals 2x plus 1. When you start seeing things like this, you need to understand that these typically are going to make some sort of a line. It's no longer going to be an answer, it's going to be a line. Hopefully by the end of this chapter, what um, you'll be able to do is look at this equation and be able to visualize the line that would go with it. So that's what this entire lesson is about. So let's just do a, go ahead and put your pencils down. You don't need to copy anything right now, but let's go ahead and try a problem so that you can see this. If I had the equation y equals 2 times x plus 3, and I asked you to solve that equation for me, what I want you to do is actually make a line. So here's what you're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to put different numbers in for x and get different numbers out for y. So if I put a 1 in for, if I put a, let's put a start with a 0. So if I put a 0 in for x, I would have 2 times 0 plus 3, which would be 3. If I put a 1 in for x, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. If I put a 2 in for x, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. And then let's put two more prop. Let's put a two negatives in. So negative two. Two times, neg uh, let's put a negative one in and a negative two in. So a negative one times two is negative two plus three is one. And then a negative two times two is four. A uh, negative four plus three is negative one. Okay. Now what you've done now is you've created a bunch of X numbers and a bunch of Y answers that go with them. An input and an output an input and an output. When you do these kind of problems, and I ask you to solve these kind of problems, what you're going to do is generate a bunch of points that are solutions to this equation. This is an equation, and it's going to have an infinite amount of numbers, because depending on what I put in for x, I'm going to get different numbers out for y. For example, when I put a 0 in for x, I got a 3 for y. When I put a 1 in for x, I got a 5 for y, et cetera, et cetera. It's the exact same thing. You're going to generate a bunch of points. These are x, y coordinates. So let's go ahead and graph these points. 0, 3. 0, 3 is here. Let's put a dot there. 1, 5. Uh, sorry, 0, 3 is here. Let's go ahead and erase that, erase that other one. Um, so 0, 3 is there. 1, 5 is here. 2, 7 is here. Negative 1, 1 is here. And hopefully by now you're realizing that you, these dots are in a line. Negative 2, negative 1 is here, right around here somewhere. What you're going to notice is that these are going to start making a line. If they don't make a line, you probably screwed up somewhere, so keep that in mind. Um, so what we're going to do is make a line here. And that line is going to go through all three points. And I have a hard time with this uh, program to do this, but your line would keep going on and on forever in both directions. Now, what's interesting about this line is, and I don't think a lot of teachers and students spend enough time on this, is this line is very important. Because what this line does is it starts showing you other numbers that you can put in for x and what y would go with them that would make this equation true. For example, I could put a 0 in for x, and I could get a 3 for y. That makes it true. I could put some other numbers in, and that's what this line does. Any point on this line is going to make the xy coordinate tr um, true. So let's try one. Here's an easy one to read. 3, 9 is on the line. Agreed? 3, 9 is on the line. Let's put a 3 in for x. 2 times 3. Let's put a 3 in for x. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 more is 9. Notice that point that was on the line is also an answer to this equation. And I can try other numbers. I know it's a little bit off down here, but this is a point that's on the line. What's the name of this point? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3 is an answer that's on the line. Watch this. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. 
So what I want you to get is all this line is is all the xy coordinates that worked to make this equation true. When you see this line, what you're basically doing is you're saying all the dots that make up that line, every dot that makes this equation true will make this line. So if I can find a dot on this line, I know that it's an answer to this equation. And that's the whole idea behind linear equations. What is a line really? It's just an infinite amount of points put together will make a line. That's the basic definition of what a line is, an infinite amount of points in a straight line with each other. So keep that in mind. When you see an equation, what you're basically saying is, what are all the dots that make up that make this equation true? What are all the xy coordinates that make this equation true? You put all those dots together, you're going to make a line, and that's why we call them linear equations. So that's the idea behind it. We're going to spend the rest of the chapter talking about this, but that's the key to this chapter. All right, so let's go back to the notes. You need to be taking notes now, please. So when we're graphing linear equations with tables, this is what you're going to do. You're going to get y by itself, okay? And I'll explain that in a minute. Then you need to make a table, and then you need to graph it, okay? And then there's a special thing to remember here, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. All right, so let's look at the first example. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some numbers in for x. Well, in this case, they want the domain to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So those are the numbers I'm going to put in for x. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then what goes here? There's going to be three columns. Okay, or, Sorry, four columns. In the second column, this goes there. So 2x plus 1. Okay? So then all we do now is we put these numbers in for x. So we get 2 times negative 2 plus 1. We get 2 times negative 1 plus 1. We get 2 times 0 plus 1. We get 2 times 1 plus 1. And we get 2 times 2 plus 1. All right, so then we just solve each one. What is 2 times a negative 2? Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So if x is a negative 2, y has to be a negative 3. Put the negative 1 in. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. Put the 0 in. Well, that's going to make 1. Put the 1 in. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. Put the 2 in. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. I like putting in two negative numbers, 0, and two positive numbers for my and uh, numbers that I use for x. If they don't tell you what to use, I want you to always use two negatives, two positives, and zero. All right? Now, once I do this, I have an x number and a net y number. I have an input and I have an output. Well, that input and output becomes a coordinate on a graph. So negative 2, negative 3 is my first point. Negative 1, negative 1 is my second point. 0, 1 is my third point. 1, 3 is my fourth point, and 2, 5 is my last point. And then all I want to do is graph those points. So this takes a little bit of work, but it's, it's actually, nothing's hard about it. It's just, it just takes a few minutes. As we go along in this chapter, um, you're going to start learning other ways of graphing. This is probably the least efficient way of graphing, but it always does work. So let's graph the first point. Negative 2, negative 3. I believe is right here, right? Try to be real accurate with your graphing. Negative 1, negative 1 is right here. Uh, 0, 1 is there. That's actually a special point. That's the point that it crosses the y-axis. And we call that point the y-intercept. And we're going to learn about that later. Uh, 1, 3 is the next point. Graph that. And then we graph the last point, 2, 5. There's that point. Now, what you'll notice is that these dots should be in a straight line with each other. If they're not in a straight line, you screwed up somewhere, and that's a good little test for yourself to know whether or not you're, you're doing it correct or not. So, once we do that, we're just going to take those dots, and we're going to make a line out of them. And I'm going to have to just get rid of that other line in a minute here. So, you're going to take those dots, and they're going to make a straight line together.
And like I said before, the more accurate you graph this, the better off you're going to be. So take those dots. It's really hard to do this on a uh, computer, but you get the idea behind it. Those dots should make a straight line going straight through the graph. Now what this line represents, and I want to stress this again to you guys, once you take all those dots and you make a line out of them, make sure it's straight. What this line represents is all the numbers for x comma y that will make 2x plus 1 true. So if I can find a dot on this line, and I can read it, and I put that into this equation, it's going to work. That's what this line is. It's all the xy coordinates put together that work for this equation. It's all the numbers you can put in for x and the y value that would go with it to make this equation true. This line is all it is. It's just a bunch of dots, all the, the infinite amount of dots that make this equation true. Okay? So there's our first example. So let's do another example. All right. Going back to our examples from earlier, remember what I said, get y by itself first. So that's the first thing we want to do. In this equation, y is not by itself, is it? So we're going to have to get so get the y by itself first. So we're going to have to go off. I don't have room here, so I'm going to go off to the side and do this. If I have the equation uh, x, sorry here, if I have the equation x plus 2y equals 4, and I want to get the y by itself, Remember, we did this in the last chapter called literal equations. We're trying to get a variable by itself. So the first thing I want to do is add a negative x to both sides. Okay? And I'm left with 2y equals negative x plus 4. All right, so you end up with uh, 2y equals negative x plus 4. Sorry for my bad writing. Okay? Now you want to divide both sides by 2, and you're left with y equals. Now I like to distribute that 2 to both things, so I'm going to divide both things by a 2. So remember, there's a 1 here, right? So there's a negative 1x, really, plus 4 over 2. So divide both things by 2. Negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half x, and 4 divided by 2 is Two. So we end up with the equation y equals negative one-half x plus two. So that is going to be our new equation. y equals negative one-half x plus two. All right, this time we're going to put the same domain numbers in. So we're going to put a negative two, a negative one, a zero, a one, and a two in. What goes here? Well, whatever y is equal to. So in this case, it's negative 1 half x plus 2. All right. That's always y. That's always x comma y. And then we just go ahead and get started with fun. All right. So first thing we do is we put a negative 2 in for x. So we get negative 1 half times a negative 2 plus 2. Then we put a negative 1 in for x, so we get negative 1 half times a negative 1 plus 2. Then we put a 0 in for x, so we get negative 1 half of 0 plus 2. Then I put a 1 in, so negative 1 half times 1 plus 2. And then I put a 2 in, negative 1 half times 2 plus 2. And I go ahead and solve each equation. All right, so go ahead and solve each one. Negative 1 half times a negative 2. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and half of 2 is 1. So one, negative 1 half times a negative 2 is 1, plus 2 is 3. If you make a mistake on your assignment tonight, it's going to be because of dropping signs or something. A negative times a negative here is a positive, so half of 1 is a half. So 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. Okay, try the next one. Half of nothing is still nothing, plus 2 is 2. 
Try the next one. Half of negative and negative times a positive is a negative. Half of one is a half. So this is negative one half plus two. Negative one half plus two is one and a half. If you need to on these, go ahead and go off to the side and just do the math. So you know if you need to do that, you're going to say negative one, negative one half times one is negative a half plus two. Go off to the side and do the math. Well, you're going to subtract them, right? Two minus a half is one and a half, and then figure out if it's positive or negative. You can do that. Go off to the side and do the math, because that's where the mistakes are going to happen. Do the last one. Negative half of two. Half of two is one, so it's negative one plus two, which is one. And notice these are always going down by a half. That's, there's a reason that's happening. It's because that number is negative one half. But there's a pattern here, and if you, if you don't see a pattern, you're probably messed up. Okay? Now we go ahead and make the xy coordinates. So our first point is negative 2, 3. Our second point is negative 1, 2 and a half. Our third point is 0, 2. And that's called the y-intercept again. Our next point is 1, 1 and a half. And our final point is 2 comma 1. Okay, now what do I do with those? Well, I graph them. So let's graph each point. Uh, let's see, negative 2, 3 is here. Uh, negative 1, 2 and a half. Negative 1, 2 and a half is about right here. Next one, 0, 2 is here. 1, 1 and a half. So 1, 1 and a half is here. You can see the straight line being made. And 2, 1 is here. So there's our straight line. All right. All right. So what we're going to do now is these dots are making a straight line and we're going to go ahead and graph that line. And that line is going to look something like this. Well, just mess that up. Excuse me for a minute. Let me fix that. That graph is going to look something like this. And I'm going to have to fix it again. It's like I said, it's not easy to graph on this. Uh... So let's try it one more time. All right. And that line would keep extending in this direction forever. So use your imagination here. That line is a straight line going on forever in both directions. And every dot that is on that line is an equation that works. That's what I'm saying with this, okay? So make that straight line. There it is. What am I saying now? I want you to, I want you to make sure you understand this. What does this line represent? This line is all the xy coordinates that work for this equation. For example, I could test if I put a 4 in for x, I should get a 0 for y because that point right there is 4. That point right there is 4, comma, 0. So let's see if that's true. What if I put a 4 in for x? Well, if I put a 4 in for x, I'd get negative a half of 4 plus 2. Well, half of 4 is 2, so it's negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Yeah, there it is. So what is this line run? Once again, I want you to make sure you understand this. It's all the xy coordinates that work for this equation. Okay? There we go. All right. Now we're going to have two special cases. We're going to have the special case of y equals 5 and the special case of x equals negative 4. When this happens, this is what I want you to do. I need you to, instead of making a table for these, I need you just to visualize what's happening. No matter what I put in for x, y is going to equal to 5. That's what this is saying. No matter what I put in for x, y is 5. Okay? So if I put a 1 in for x, y is 5. There's a dot there. If I put a 2 in for x, y is 5. If I put a 3 in for x, y is 5. If I put a 4 in for x, y is 5. If I put a negative 10 in for x, y is 5. What are you noticing? Well, it's a perfectly horizontal line. 
And so that is what we're going to graph. A perfectly horizontal line going from there to there. That's it. So when you see y equals a number, it's going to be a horizontal line. Horizontal line at that number. So if it's y equals 5, you go to y equals 5 and you make a horizontal line. If it was y equals 10, you go to 10 and make a horizontal line. If it was y equals negative 6, you go to negative 6 and make a horizontal line. Got it? And that's exactly what these notes are saying at the beginning of the lesson. Y equals a number are horizontal lines. X equals a number are vertical lines. So let's look at this one. This one's a little bit harder to understand, okay? But what I'm saying here is, no matter what I put in for y, x is going to be a negative 4. So if I said y was 2, x would be a negative 4. If I said y was 4, x would be a negative 4. If I said y was 6, x would be a negative 4. You see what's going on here? 8, x would be negative 4. What's happening? I'm making a perfectly horizontal line. I'm sorry, a perfectly vertical line. right? Perfectly vertical line. So what am I saying here? When you have x equals a number, it's going to make a vertical line. Okay? y equals a number, horizontal lines. x equals a number, vertical lines. If it's x equals negative 4, you go to negative 4 for x and you make a vertical line. If it's x equals 6, you go to x equals 6 and make a vertical line. And that's it. Real simple. All right? So to summarize this lesson, you're going to get the y by itself. Then you're going to put in, make a table using whatever domain they give you. If they don't tell you which domain to use, use 2, negative, 0, 1, and 2. Okay? I would probably always use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Unless it's not an easy problem doing it that way. All right? Now, uh, this would be another lesson for the next day, but let's go ahead and do this now. So, uh, in your notes, let's do example 5. So, we're going to graph y equals negative 4x plus 1 for domains that are greater than 1. x has to be greater than 1. So, what does that tell me? Well, first of all, it's not greater than 1. And if you remember what we learned earlier in the year, greater than or equal to 1. So, could I put a 0 in for x? If I put a 0 in for x, this is not going to happen because x has to be greater than or equal to 1, so I can't put a 0 in for x. In fact, I can't put anything negative in or 0. What's the first number that I could put in? Well, the first number I could put in is 1. What else could I put in? Well, 2. I could put in a 3. I could put in a 4. I could put in a 5, right? I can't put anything smaller than a 1 in because that's what this is saying. Go ahead and make my table negative 4x plus 1. Put my numbers in. Negative 4 times 1 plus 1. Negative 4 times 2 plus 1. Uh, negative 4 times 3 plus 1. Uh, negative 4 times 4 plus 1. And negative 4 times 5 plus 1. Okay? Go ahead and graph each, uh, figure out what the y is for each one. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, plus 1 is negative 11. This is negative 16 plus 1, this is negative 15. You should be seeing a pattern here. Negative 20 plus 1 is negative 19. Okay, go ahead and graph these points. Negative 3, I'm sorry. Not graph yet. Let's put them. 1, negative 3. 2, negative 7. 3, negative 11. 4, negative 15. And 5, negative 19. All right? All right, let's graph them. Uh, 1, negative 3 is here. 2, negative 7 is here. 3, negative 11 is off the page, but it would be about right here. And the rest of these points are off the graph, so I'm not going to bother graphing them. Now, this is the part I need you to understand. In every other problem that we've done so far, the line goes all the way through the graph. But in this case, that is not going to happen anymore. The line is going to 
start at a spot and keep going from there. So in this case, what I'm going to do, my line is going to start here at the negative 3, at the 1, negative 3, but it's only going to go in this direction. So my line is going to look like this. There is not going to be anything above here because none of the x values below 1 are going to work. So I can't put a 0 in for x, I can't put a negative 1 in for x. It's like making the whole line and then cutting it off right there. So that's what that looks like. All right, let's do the next one. Well, before I can graph this, notice that I have y is not by itself, so I'm going to have to get y by itself first. So let's go off to the side and do that. Y, uh, negative 4x plus 2y uh, equals 8, right? Add 4x to both sides. I end up with 2y equaling 4x plus 8. Okay, divide both sides by 2. I end up with y equaling, remember I had to distribute that 2 to both numbers. So 4 divided by 2 is 2x, and 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2x plus 4. So that is what I'm going to be graphing, y equals 2x plus 4. Got it? So that's what goes here, 2x plus 4. All right. Now we've got to be careful here. In this case, it's telling me I can only graph x values between negative 10 and 0. I'm saying that negative 10 is bigger than x, well, greater than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 0. So what I'm basically saying is, is I can only put in numbers from negative 10 to 0 for x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick some numbers for x that are between there. And I'm going to include those two starting and ending points. So I'm going to put the negative 10 in. Then I'm going to put some other points in that I know. Negative 10, I'm going to put in, let's say, negative 8, negative uh, 4, negative 2, and I can put in 0. So I'm going to put in a 0 also. All right, so let's put those numbers in. Uh, 2 times negative 10 plus 4. Then I'm going to put 2 times negative 8 plus 4. Then I'm going to put in 2 times negative 4 plus 4. And then I'm going to put in uh, 2 times negative 2 plus 4. And finally, 2 times 0 plus 4. And remember, I picked these numbers because those are the numbers that they're telling me I can use for x, from negative 10 to 0. So in this case, let's solve these. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20, plus 4 is negative 16. 2 times negative 8, two times negative eight is negative 16, plus 4 is negative 12. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, plus 4 is negative 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. And 2 times 0 plus 4 is 4. So what are my equation? What are my points? Uh, negative 10, negative 16, negative 8, negative 12, negative 4, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 0, 4. There's all our points. Go ahead and graph the ones that you can graph. If you can't graph them because they're off the, uh, the page, then that's okay. Just ignore those. The first one that looks like I could probably graph is this one. Negative 8, negative 12 is probably somewhere right around there, right? And then we have negative 4, negative 4 is somewhere right around there. And then 2, 0, that's an easy one to graph. Uh, sorry, negative 2, 0 is there. And 0, 4 is there. Okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and graph this. 
I'm going to go ahead and graph this now. I'm going to graph these, and in this case, they're, the only numbers that work are from here to there. And there's not going to be an arrow there because the arrow means that it keeps going, and it does not keep going in this case. It's going to be a line clipped off in both places. So it's going to start at x equaling 0, and it's going to end at x equaling negative 8. And in actuality, this line would keep going in this direction. If you could see, it would be clipped off there, but that arrow would be keep going all the way to x equals negative 10 with negative 16, which would be somewhere down here that we can't even see. All right? So that's the idea behind these types. When you have, when they tell you that the domain is restricted, that means that you can only put in certain numbers for x, you're going to get equations like this, okay? And there you have it, graphing linear equations. It's a very long lesson, and I believe uh, in the class we probably break this up in, into two days, but uh, that's how you do it. If you need to, go back and look at the uh, examples again, but it's not a very hard uh, concept to understand. I really think the hard part about this lesson is making sure you don't make a mistake in your math, okay? Good luck.